I'm Aaron P. Rad, and welcome to another Scott Equipment Company Automation Simplified video featuring how to troubleshoot SMC valves. Hey, occasionally I get a phone call trying to help out diagnose or troubleshoot an SMC manifold. One of the things that I've love about the SMC manifold is its ability to troubleshoot in kind of oddball thought processes that make it easy, quick, and fast to determine what's wrong. One of the easiest ways to diagnose, say, a missing valve, a leak, etc., is almost just to take it apart and look at it and see if you see anything unusual or something oddball. Let's go over a few of the ways that I recently had to go through with a customer to diagnose or troubleshoot a manifold. So one of the first problems that I've had lately is a phone call about a newer manifold that was built and delivered with say a leak, uh, a leak in the system. The gentleman has called me, he's completely letting me know that he needs all new gaskets, that he's having issues, that it's hissing and screaming and making noise. Uh, so I went by to pick up the manifold and as I did and he was showing me the leak, I basically had seen that he had made a few changes, changed a few of the fitting ports, and that when he did that, that's when this leak first started. So what I did was disassemble a couple of the pieces of the manifold to show him where he had made a mistake and after we reassembled it within probably three to five minutes, uh, everything was good to go and we went on. Let's take this manifold apart. And let me show you a couple of the details of what was wrong with his. And then we'll also do a, one or two other easy, simple solution solving troubleshooting situations. The manifold is basically a fully assembled part by part, component by a component, easily snapped together almost uh, what we would call a Lego situation. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I have a manifold, seems to be making a noise. Uh, customers telling me that the seals are bad and it's leaking in between. So first thing I'm gonna do is just disassemble. Three screws, um, could be two if it's an SY3000, um, but basically on a 5,000 combo, it's three screws on the end, one, two, three, and we, we just take it apart. Basically just slides apart, falls down. Uh, be careful, don't lose the screws. They are special screws. Um, they are easy to get again back through SMC, but we don't wanna lose one. We wanna put it right back together and, and go from where we were from. So when I took this gentleman's manifold apart, I took the end piece off. I'm gonna take a couple of the slices off. And the first thing I'm gonna do is inspect the seals. So. As you see here, uh, the seal is typically in two to three pieces. We'll have a seal in between. We'll have two different seals down. And then if I remove this, it's exact replica. One in between, one or two underneath the valve. So I, I look and I see these are perfect as I thought they would be. No problems, easy to check. So I'm gonna go back and I'm actually gonna remove the valve off the top. Basically, it's just two screws. Two of the screws are to hold the solenoid on, two are to remove the valve. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the valve. And pull the valve off, nice and slow. And I can basically see that this seal is intact. So the next thing I'm gonna do is figure out why this thing is making so much noise. So I turn around and look, and I go for straight for what we call the diaper pin or the lock pin for the fittings, and I pull the fitting out, and I notice that the fitting here is loose. So basically, uh, what I'm hoping, or actually what ended up happening, was the gentleman changed the component on the fitting. He, When he went to insert the fitting correctly or all the way in, he didn't seat the fitting all the way to the back. A little push with an o-ring quick drop of the clip and we're off to the races so bang done we later assembled this manifold back together boom had no problems 
So little things like that, even though there are a few more parts and a few more pieces, if you know what you're working with and working on, I, we fix this valve bank in probably three to five minutes, put it back together, check the electrical portion, good to go. One of the second problems I've had lately diagnosing an SY manifold with a customer is a bad valve. He had uh, merely wired in a, an older valve bank that he had and we were gonna come in and he was having issues with the wiring. He was very certain and sure that his wiring was correct. So we went over the proper wiring diagram and then we just started troubleshooting. So the first thing we did was why not? Why not take a valve off here swap it with a valve on the end and see if you're having the same problem, which we did. After that, we did find that we're still having the same problem, but if that was just the only problem, it would already fix the problem, boom, replace the valve, we're ready to go. In his case, the valve wasn't firing past and through. So what we did, we once again, just unbolted the end, remove the valve, or end cap, I'm sorry, slowly went directly to the bad valve, removed it and with the subplate, because at this point we're feeling like maybe the subplate has a connectivity issue. We check for dirt, we check for contamination, cleanliness, obviously the gaskets, everything looks really clean here. And let's just shift it. We're gonna shift it over to the end. We'll put it in a different position and then we'll put it back together and see if we're having the same problem. So I've removed what I believe to be a bad subplate and I'm just gonna shift it over to the end and push it together gently. I'm going to install the end cap back on, tighten lightly, and we're gonna double check this. And we did, and that was the problem. The customer had used a, a basically an older valve bank that he had with a used component and one of the valve banks was, uh, subplates was bad. We were able to diagnose quickly, got him a new subplate, and he's off to the races. The third problem I had lately was a customer had taken an SY valve bank and was having an issue with it not firing correctly through the proper channels. So we came by, talked, and he had admitted to me that he had been messing with the valve bank and reconfigured the whole series. So what we ended up doing was checking his wiring and found out that he knew he had all double solenoid valve plates, which means he, uh, so each subplate would be say one, three, uh, or excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. But what he'd actually done when he replaced with one of his older parts units, he accidentally on the valve subplate had installed a single uh, valve subplate instead of a double. So for instance, he went one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And where he tried to go seven, eight, it would only go seven because he had at this point used a single solenoid subplate. Uh, reason how we knew that, it's stamped here 90% of the time. Now, maybe if it's older, older, that might not be the problem but it's stamped right here in front of the valve. It'll say S for single or D for double, or if it's not stamped at all, it is considered a double. So uh, if you have a certain problem like this, make an easy check, run back through, right here where the clip pin is for the fitting to come out, and make sure you have exactly what you've asked for, what you're needed, and how you're wiring it to that application.